Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. I'm sure I saw some of you at the earlier meeting, so if you get to see me twice, it's your lucky day. <laughs> so we're, today we're going to talk about be smart and have a healthy heart. And for those of you who don't know me, my name's Courtney Felter. I am a speech language pathologist by background um, and a program manager here for Biata Home Health. With it being the month of February, I figured we'd talk about the heart. So what is heart disease? Heart disease is a blockage or narrowing in the blood vessels that lead to the heart, also known as cardiovascular disease. Heart rhythm problems, heart infections, and heart defects from birth. Some of those symptoms include chest pain, shortness of breath, and numbness in the chest. Some of the arrhythmia symptoms include fluttering in the chest, heartbeat too slow or too fast, lightheadedness, dizzy, fainting, shortness of breath, and chest pain. So as you can see, a lot of the symptoms are the same. So some of the heart infection symptoms, here's a differentiator, fever, fatigue, weakness, dry persistent cough, shortness of breath, skin rashes, changes in that heart rhythm, and then swelling in the legs or the abdomen. Okay, any questions thus far? So cardiomyopathy symptoms include dizzy lightheadedness, fainting, fatigue, bloating, swelling again, irregular heartbeat, and breathlessness. Heart defect symptoms, shortness of breath, tiring easily during exercise or activity, buildup of the fluid in the lungs, and then the swelling in the hands, ankles, or feet. Is anybody recognizing a trend here? If something's going on with your heart? I know you're, you're filming. But he's noticing a trend. <laughs> well, I had a heart attack in uh, May. And uh, the symptoms you're describing are symptoms I've experienced prior to that heart attack. And uh, now I'm in good shape and back in uh, good working order, but um, these symptoms were um, uh, good warning signs of a problem. Very good. Thank you for sharing. Like we've all said, and, and your doctors and healthcare workers are constantly saying, it's very important to be aware of any change in your body, right? Shortness of breath, that's a change. It's very common to be short of breath if you're walking for long distances or walking up the steps. But it's not common to just for it to just come on very quickly. The swelling is a good one. If you notice in the morning one day that you go to put on your socks and shoes and they don't fit, that's a change, right? Now again, your sodium intake, if you had a big burger or Chinese food the night before, that could have some say in it. But like our friend in the back said, he was having all these symptoms um, and then Unfortunately, unfortunately, had a heart attack, but is here to tell about it. Valvular disease symptoms, that fatigue, shortness of breath, irregular heartbeat, murmur, swollen feet or ankles, chest pain, and fainting. So a lot of these symptoms are the same, right? It's all affecting your heart. So you would get to the doctor, and they would be able to diagnose what exactly is going on. So some statistics on heart disease. Heart and blood vessel disease are the leading cause of death in the United States. Healthy lifestyle habits play a significant role in reducing deaths from heart disease. So I don't know your name, and I apologize I didn't ask, but was there anything after your heart attack that your doctor changed with your lifestyle and your eating, if you don't mind? 
I don't always exercise quite a bit, but the uh, doctor set me up with a, um, a um, very effective uh, rehab program at uh, Mainline Health at that time, and also um, uh, setting me up with uh, blood thinners and uh, uh, statins. And um, uh, that seems to be working and uh, working okay. Very good. And what was your name? Phil. Thank you, Phil, for sharing. So Phil said that he was put, his doctor put him into a um, intense rehab program, added some medication, and then he continued to eat a healthy diet. Very good. So some risk factors for heart diseases, some of those uncontrollable factors, gender, age, family history, and as you can see, some of the control controllable factors, smoking, untreated or uncontrolled high blood pressure, high blood cholesterol and diabetes, being overweight, obese, physical inactivity, and high stress. So you all go to the doctor, you have your yearly checkups, whatever it may be, um, and they're constantly checking your blood pressure. Untreated high blood pressure can affect that heart at the end of the day. Any questions? Some complications of heart disease, heart failure, heart attack, stroke, aneurysm, peripheral artery disease, and sudden cardiac arrest. So again, we talked about the causes. These heart defects, heart disease, infections in the heart, those symptoms include that chest pain, right? Tightness of the chest, chest pain, shortness of breath, your legs and feet and hands are swollen. And those results, that heart can no longer pump blood to the body. Let's talk a little bit more about heart attack. So some of those symptoms include pressure and pain in the chest, shoulder, arm, back, and jaw, okay? Shortness of breath, profuse sweating, fainting, nausea and vomiting, or anxiety or panic. I'm sure you've heard or may have said, oh, I have this pressure in my chest if you're really anxious about something. So they kind of go hand in hand. Women may also have increased heartburn, clammy skin, dizziness, and extreme fatigue. So these are all symptoms to look out for, and that Phil actually shared that he had. A stroke. So a stroke occurs when the arteries leading to the brain are narrowed or blocked, preventing the blood from flowing there. A stroke is considered a serious medical emergency, and brain damage can occur within a few minutes of a stroke. Any questions? An aneurysm. So an aneurysm occurs when the bulge or blockage affects the arteries leading to the heart. So again, that blood is not able to get up to the heart. Peripheral artery disease occurs when a patient's limbs do not receive enough blood flow. And the most common symptom is strong leg pain when walking. This is something we see as uh, therapists. If, if you're being treated for any sort of physical therapy and you're saying that you have um, strong leg pain, you typically think that it's muscular. But our therapists um, are able to you know, diagnose and see and um, send you to the doctor if they think it's more than just a muscular pain. Sudden cardiac arrest. So if that is not immediately treated by a medical professional, it typically results in death. So lifestyle and home remedies. First and foremost, quit smoking. Control diabetes, if that is a diagnosis. Avoid excessive caffeine and alcohol. Get a flu shot and a COVID shot. I have to add that to that. Monitor your blood pressure and cholesterol. 
especially if you have family history, right, of increased cholesterol or blood pressure, it's always good to, to, have, to know your baseline. Exercise and eat healthy and manage stress. Some treatments for heart disease, medication, surgery, pacemakers. And of course, coping and support for heart disease. There's cardiac rehabilitation that Phil shared that he had gone to. There are support groups. And then of course, keeping up with your medical checkups. Any questions? Yes, I'll walk back here. I have atrial fibrillation, and you're born with that, aren't you? There's nothing really you can do. Yeah, so she has AFib, um, and yes, it usually is very heavily um, genetic, and it's just an irregular heartbeat. Um, I imagine you're being monitored by a cardiologist. I'm not sure, um, but and you may be managed by medication. There are some surgical interventions um, depending on where you are with your AFib and how irregular your heartbeat is. Well, my sister had a pacemaker put in. Does that take care of it? I mean, of AFib? yeah. Yes. Yes. Any other questions? Now, if I don't know the answer because I'm a speech pathologist, we will take these questions <laughs> and pass them to our nurse. Thank you. Um, it's something I've noticed the last, uh, I don't know, maybe several months, but, but clearly more recently. Are there fewer people, I mean, noticeably fewer people smoking? Yeah. Now, on campus, I'm not referring to it here, but out and about, it, it, we saw a, a female light up a cigarette, a person, you know, middle age, say, yesterday. <laughs> And we both made a comment kind of simultaneously, why wow, you don't see many people smoke anymore. And I wondered if that's kind of a, you know, where the world's at, bad English, but uh, good to hear. I, I mean, it's, it's a terrible habit. <laughs> oh, yeah, I had a question about a stress test. When are they prescribed, numbered one, and then after you've had one, depending on the results, how often are they prescribed to keep an eye on someone? Do they really use them that often anymore? Yes, those are both. So what was your first name? So Toby was talking. He's seen a lot less smokers, which I 100% agree. I think um, if you think about it, we used to be able to smoke on airplanes, in restaurants, at a bar, you know, you don't see that anymore, which is nice. Um, and I actually think it's kind of like the, um, the sun tanning phase as well, right? Now we're really promoting more sunscreen and there's, yes, so you're seeing less commercials and things about cigarettes. So that brings up a great point. Um, and then Christy asked about a stress test. So depending on where you are with why you're at the doctor, um, they could order a stress test based off of multiple reasons. And then they read that stress test. Um, and if something was off, they may treat it with some sort of medication. If something was uh, really off, they may have a different intervention. And whatever that intervention, they may bring you back to test to see if you're back to the level you need to be. Does that make sense? It's going to be very case specific. Um, so yeah, you're welcome. Anything else? Any plans for Valentine's Day since we're talking about heart? <laughs> Sounds like they're having a big party here, which is nice. Well, thank you all for coming. I look forward to seeing you next month. We will be talking about brain health and doing a little trivia to change it up a little bit so it's not just listening to someone on the microphone. <laughs> but I really appreciate everyone coming and learning about having 
a healthy heart, and always remember exercise, eating healthy, and listen to your body. Thank you all.